Tariq, how is she? Well, she for yourself. Well, how's the baby? Is he okay? In some kind of danger? I need to know. I'm not a ghost. I can fix whatever problem I'm in. Whoever took him from me is gonna pay. Bottom line. Who was it? We will not stop until we get this guy. Dirty cop Peter Diana B. What? If you're... We're all at risk now. What makes you think you can trust Davis or Tariq? I don't trust either of them. What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Odai J and we are locked in. This is what's next for Power Book 2, Episode 7. Let me say this. We've been on a drought this summer, and episode six came out with a bang, exactly what we were looking for. People getting stomped out, good cop, bad cop. We don't know who's who. We don't know who's gonna survive, but there's action. And before we jump into this and break down this trailer for episode seven, if you like power content, breakdowns, theories, and predictions, live after shows, you know I'll be breaking the shows down. Then hit your subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button. We're on that road to 50,000 subscribers. We need under 250 more. So help out and hit that subscribe button. Now, I stayed up. I watched the episode at 6 a.m. my time. I'm in Germany, did a first reaction, and now we're breaking down this trailer. So let's jump into it. This is what's next for episode seven of Book Two Ghost. The description for episode seven, I Can't Fix This, says when tragedy strikes, Tariq and the Tejadas are set on a mission to avenge what they lost. Drew must take out a threat to Carter's organization in order to protect his family. Now, when that tragedy strikes, I'm assuming they're talking about Diana and being stomped down by Felicia and Tariq and the Tejadas on a mission to avenge what they lost. The baby, they're definitely going to be going after Felicia. And with Drew taking out a threat for Carter's organization, we already heard that he's going to have to take out Roman because he's on the inside and things are looking bad. So let's jump into these photos and see where we can connect the dots. The first thing we saw was Tariq and Monet in the hospital. Now, Monet's asking Tariq, hey, what about Diana? Is she all right? Is the baby there? And of course, Tariq doesn't know at this point. But as the title said, there's a tragedy. They're trying to avenge what they lost. So I'm assuming that the baby is probably not here. But Felicia, she already had a history of using brute force. That's why she was getting called in. Now for Tariq, he doesn't really know Felicia as the Tejadas would because they came into the house. She took the baby clothes. She made a cup of water and put Diane on that mission where Tariq actually unalived Zion. So right now, everybody's hands is in the pot, but they need to come together and put all their differences aside and go after Miss Felicia. I didn't really believe that Kamal Tate was going to make it to the end of the season, but going to talk to Don and telling him that the whole organization is crooked, people are stealing money, well, it ended up with him being unalive. And this is the first time we see Rashad Tate back on screen this season. So Rashad being here, listening to Don Carter, we know that Rashad used to be one of these dirty cops. So I already know that the first thought in his mind is, I'm gonna probably need to get with Tariq and Davis and figure out who this cop is. Because remember, Davis and Tariq, they're both against Don also. And Don is moving real funny out here. So Rashad isn't gonna believe that somebody just unalived his brother for no reason. So when Don Carter is telling them, we're not gonna stop until we find who did this, the whole time he's the one who did this, Rashad Tate is gonna do a little bit of digging on his own. Now, he's going to probably discover a few more things about Don Carter that we didn't know, which will be good for Tariq and Davis in the long run. But Rashad Tate, there's no way he's going to stand by and let this go. Don Carter is going to try to continue on with this lie because he has to cover all of his tracks at this point. We even see Don Carter going out looking for a quote unquote suspect. Now, I'm thinking that this is a kick door where we seen in the original trailer going into this second half where Don Carter is going to unalive somebody, maybe a drug dealer, and then shoot the gun and plant the evidence. Well, plant the other gun on them. So Don Carter, they're covering their tracks. We also see in this trailer that Felicia, they're going to probably have to get rid of her. They're going to have to cut her off because what she did to Diana, there's probably going to be more complaints coming. So at this point, we see the walls crumbling down on Don Carter, but we know that he's not going to give up that easily. Being that we were talking about Felicia and how Don Carter is going to have to cut her off, Tariq is even telling Braden, listen, man, a dirty cop whooped on her. So that means Tariq and Braden are on the scene. We've seen what they did to Zion, but the only thing is they have to be careful because if they get too close to Felicia, 
Remember, she does have footage of him and Brayden unalive in Zion inside of the safe house. So right now, it's everyone going after everyone, but everyone has to watch their backs because you may think you have an upper hand on someone, but they have some information on you. So Tariq and Brayden, I don't know how they're gonna approach this situation, but this might actually work out with Rashad Tate being back on the scene. Talk to Rashad. Rashad is like, wait a minute. She works with Don Carter? Well, my brother was on the live. Tariq is in 15 different situations all at once. And he's finally talking to his mom, Tasha. And she's asking him if he's in any trouble. Now we hear him say, I am not ghost. I can fix this. Tariq is not ghost. We know that. He's never going to be as good as ghost. But the fact that he thinks that he can go out here and change everything that's going on, the crooked cop, Don Carter on his case, Noma, the unalive and the Zion, plus the 10 other things that been piling up this whole spinoff. Tasha's like, Tariq, you really need help at this moment because Tariq really has no one in his corner except for Davis and Braden. But in the streets, that's really nobody. I'm not sure how much of Tasha we're going to see this season. Remember, she was up working and her supervisor was kind of harassing her. So I don't know if Tariq went to visit her or she actually came into the city. But we know that she's still in witness protection. So as far as Tasha, her end goal is to get her baby, Tariq, out of this nonsense and up there with them, her and Yaz, and taking the money, whatever that James left for him or whatever is left with Tariq, Ponzi schemes, giving stuff to RSJ, RSJ gave back the club. It's just a whole bunch of mess. Davis and Noma are still getting close. The only thing is Davis is working with Tariq. Remember, they came and brokered a deal. We'll take out Zion if you can give Tariq a more favorable deal. Now, when Kane finds out that Davis is really knocking this down for real, for real, then we're going to have some big issues because in this trailer, we hear Kane asking Noma, how can we trust Davis or Tariq? But she really trusts them a little more than she does Kane because Kane is a loose cannon. And Monet told us a couple seasons ago that he believes that two plus two is five. So I think Noma has started to peep that. And she's kind of being a little distance and trying to get away from Kane because he doesn't really have a, a, a real foot in the game as far as like the knowledge that Davis has. This isn't going to do anything but enrage Kane because Kane's family, they're doing their own thing. Now Noma, she's still questioning him after he feels like I done saved her life against Zion. Monet has lied to him about stealing the product. So he's confused and he's given up the wrong information because Monet was the one to rob Noma. Now, I think deep down inside, he believes that it was his mom, but he's still sticking up for her. So at this moment, episode seven, I think we're going to see Kane start to distance himself from Noma and realize that he really can't trust her because she's not trusted in him. And that's bad when you don't have any trust, but there's no loyalty amongst thieves. Felicia is going to be the odd person now, and that's because she's getting too many complaints about her mishaps, her use of force. Now, we heard Tariq talking to Braden about it. We heard her boss calling her in. So Don, Nico, they're going to have to cut her off. She does have the footage of Tariq and Braden unaliving Zion. That's the only thing. Now, she could probably present this to Don and say, hey, Don, I have this. Help me out, please. And Don takes this footage so he can use it as leverage and then throw her up under the bus. I don't know how she's going to make it out of it, but someone's going to unalive her if the cops don't get her first. But I don't think that Don Carter is going to allow her to get arrested. She's going to have to be unalive because if she's still alive, that means she can still talk and tell on everyone. Now for Drew, I think this is where his story ends. Orange is the new black. He's not getting out of jail. He doesn't have any leverage. He already unalive Zay, and now they want him to get rid of Roman. Well, he doesn't have any leverage, and he's telling Nico, all right, I'll do this if you can do this for me on the outside. Now, we see the prison guard giving him a nod. So at this point, Drew is going to be fighting for his life for the rest of this time in the power universe. It's only four episodes left. But I don't think he's going to make it out of here. He'll probably catch one more body. And then, just like we said with Felicia, dead mouths can't talk. 
they're going to have to unalive Drew because he knows too much and he's already alive, unalive too many people in jail. So Drew, just get used to your new home, man. We do see Tariq fighting somebody in the room. Now I'm assuming that these people are with L or it's just somebody from the school. Now, when you watch, when he was talking to Diana and Effie, there was somebody that walked by and Tariq was kind of mugging him. Now, I don't know if this is him or not. It could just be me looking too much into the show, but Tariq is fighting somebody in this room. And that's probably because A, they didn't get some product. Maybe because Braden, we know he's on drugs again. So Braden may be shorting people. We don't know yet, but Tariq is fighting in the dorm room. So there's some issue on the campus. I don't think Noma or Kane or anybody's sending anyone after Tariq. This is just some internal stuff, but Hopefully Tariq got some squabbles because we seen Zion whoop on him and Braden. And then the last thing we see is Monet with a gun with Tariq. So somebody's walking down on them. And at this point, they are all teamed up. They got one agenda. Well, maybe two. Get rid of Noma. And number two, find out how they can get rid of Felicia, who unfortunately took the baby away from the family because this is what they were all looking for. Man, episode seven looks like it's about to be crazy too. And we should have action these last four episodes. This isn't like a regular season, y'all. This is it. This is the finale for the whole book two. All right, there you go. What's next for episode seven of Power Book Two Ghost? Let me know what you think about Rashad Tate. Is he going to piece together how his brother was unalive? And is Tariq and Monet and Diana going to get revenge? on that dirty cop Felicia for unaliving the Tejada St. Patrick hybrid baby. Let me know what you think. I'm Mo IJ. If you like this kind of content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Again, I'm on that road to 50,000 subscribers. We need about 250. So if you like this, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out.